Okay, so how is everyone today? <laughs> All right. So, uh, is that, it's kind of blown out a little bit, let's see. That's a little better. Okay, so then uh, I was uh, trying to remodel my uh, house, in fact, build a new room. And, uh, and uh, I, ca I came up across a problem that uh, I didn't know how to solve. So the thing is, is that, uh, is that uh, I wanted to build a house uh, whose dimensions uh, or room or whatever, it doesn't matter, this is completely made up. Uh, so I wanted it to, to have dimensions uh, uh, or, or it, it just does have uh, dimensions. Uh, uh, one of the measurements is uh, 24, so it's a new room. Uh, with uh, dimensions, the floor plan is 24 by uh, 54. And uh, the thing is, is that uh, I want to tile it with squares. Know, square tiles, uh, meaning that, uh, and I, d I don't want to cut any of the tiles. I want all the tiles, you know, to be perfectly square. I want to lay them all out. No cutting is necessary. You know, you can see like uh, the ceiling. You know, some some of the tiles had to be cut a little bit. I don't I don't want to do any of that. Uh, and uh, they they all have to be square. They all have to be uh, complete. And uh, furthermore, I found this uh, this uh, this tile company. And uh, they'll sell me tiles, and uh, and uh, it doesn't matter what the size is, uh, the cost is the same. So, like, you know, if this is you know in feet, if that's a uh, 24 feet and that's 54 feet, since uh, every foot consists of 12 inches, then I could I could get the I could get the uh, the one inch tiles, right? But uh, that'd be really expensive, right? Because uh, one-inch tiles will definitely tile this room, but so would two-by-two two tiles, right? Those would tile the room also, and uh, because all tiles cost exactly the same, uh, I'm, I'm much, I, I do much better to have the tiles that are two-by-two two inches by two inches rather than the tiles that are one-inch one inch by one-inch, right? So everybody get the, the idea? Okay, so we're going to answer the question. We need a little bit of graph paper. So these, uh, the, uh, the grid on here is, uh, oh yeah, so I want to tile it with square tiles, and uh, I want to tile it with, uh, with the fewest uh, tiles possible. Okay, so then uh, the, uh, this thing that I gave you here is, uh, you know, it's a, uh, it's, it's, uh, graph paper, and it's a bi binary graph paper uh, in the sense that uh, you can see these uh, sort of largest, uh, uh, thickest marks. Uh, those are 8 by 8, and then contained in uh, the 8 by 8, uh, these little ones are 4 by 4, and then those are 2 by 2, and then 1 by 1, and uh, you can see, the, see it like that. So uh, here's the deal. 
is that uh, let's let's uh, sketch it out. So a 24 by 54 room. So because each one of the big ones is eight, that means that uh, one of the dimensions is three of the big ones. So, uh, you know, 24 there. And then uh, another one of the dimensions is, uh, is uh, 54. So uh, because these are eights, that means I'd need to go six, six of the big ones. That'd be 48, right? So six of the big ones is 48. And then to get to 54, we'd have to go six further, right? So uh, the room uh, is going to look like that. Okay. <clears throat> so here's uh, here's the uh, the idea. Is that um, Notice that, uh, you know, like I said, this is binary, uh, binary graph paper. Because, uh, you know, each, you know, you can, you can repeatedly subdivide them into, into, into two. Notice that, uh, the, that the way it works is that uh, these squares in turn consist of uh, smaller squares, which in turn consist of smaller squares. Now, this rectangle, uh, is it a square? No, it's not a square. Uh, so we're going to take the following idea, is that uh, let's, let's figure out what's the biggest square we could actually fit inside of that rectangle. So what's the biggest one you can fit? Which one? So like, you know, we could fit one, we could fit one of these in there, but is that the biggest one that can fit? Right, 24 by 24. It's the smaller side that constrains the, the, the choice, right? So we can fit a square in that uh, has the measurement of the smallest side. So I'm going to I'm going to put that square in, which is to say that uh, all right, I'm going to uh, get that biggest square. So I took that uh, biggest square, and uh, notice that even even another one will fit, right? Okay. So go ahead and uh, go ahead and take that one also. So uh, we could fit a we could fit a 24 by 24 uh, a second uh, you know a second one of those in there. Could we fit even uh, even one more? Couldn't. Okay. Uh, but now uh, I want you to sort of think about uh, all all semester the way that uh, the way that uh, the, the things that we've talked about is we sort of we we've been saying how to how to uh, how to compute in some sense is to break the problem into two parts one part that you can do okay that you know the answer to and then uh, another part that is smaller than the problem that you were dealing with before. So, uh, an example would be to say that, uh, you know, 8 multiplied by x is uh, just a single x plus uh, 7 multiplied by x, right? So you know what a single x is, and 7 multiplied by x is a smaller problem than 8 multiplied by x. And uh, being able to uh, look at a problem that way allows you to solve just about anything. So what I want you to observe is that uh, we took a big rectangle, and I took, uh, and for reasons that aren't clear yet, it's not clear why we're doing this, but uh, notice that I took two big square bytes out, and uh, we have a little bitty rectangle left over. Right. So now I want you to, uh, you know, uh, imagine this problem 
this part of the problem is solved, and now continue doing the same thing on the, on the remaining. So please do that. Okay, so uh, well, uh, the the rectangle that's you know currently in play, uh, its dimensions are uh, are uh, six by twenty four, and we want to we want to fill it with squares that are as big as possible, and it's always the the smaller side that uh, constrains, so that means that uh, what's the biggest square we can fit in? Six by six. six, by six? All right, I'll start doing that. So six by six. So there's a. There's a six by six. Um, I see another six by six there. Uh, I see another six by six there. Uh, and then, uh, oh look, another six by six. And uh, you know, how much is left? None, right? None are left. Uh, now, now, what I want you to observe is that, uh, well, th just this part over here, we, w we were able to tile it exactly with uh, six by six tiles. Uh, but the thing is, is uh, have a look at this bigger byte that we took. So this, uh, this, this big byte, let me, let me get it off of the graph paper so that, we can still s so that you can see what I'm writing better. Uh, first, first we tiled it with uh, 24 by 24 tiles, and those are supposed to be square. So just you know, use your imagination. So this is uh, 24, 24, and then this was six, and we weren't able to proceed further than that. And then uh, we noticed, hey, you know, you can uh, actually uh, tile this little bit with uh, with six by six tiles, and uh, you can tile it uh, exactly. But the thing is, is that those uh, those 24 by 24 tiles can actually also be tiled by 6 by 6 tiles, can't they? Right? So, so what's the what's the answer to the question? How can I tile my uh, bathroom or whatever this was six, six, six. with 6 by 6 tiles? That's the that's the best I can do. I could have tiled it with 1 by 1 tiles. That would work. 1 by 1 tiles would work. 2 by 2 tiles would work. Three by three tiles would work. Six by six tiles would work. Okay, and uh, since I want to use the fewest uh, possible tiles, six by six is the best. So you can see, obviously, that one by one tiles would work, right? Because after all, these little things are just one by one. And uh, all right. So uh, please write your name on the and net ID on that uh, page and pass it to uh, your left. <coughs> So, uh, you know, that's, a, that's an interesting kind of problem. And uh, so, some of you might have seen this uh, idea before, but, uh, you know, perhaps some not. Uh, but uh, every one of you actually knows the name of this, whether or not you realize it. Uh, what is the name of this? What is the name of this uh, thing? This is the greatest common divisor. The greatest common divisor. The greatest common divisor of uh, 50 of 24 and 54 uh, is six. Interesting. So squares, it has to be squares. 
because what we're saying is that uh, we want to find a way to divide 24. It has to divide 24, so it has to line up this way. And it, we also want it to divide 54, so it has to line up this way. So it has to be, you know, little tiles that are, si that are the same that way as the same that way. So those are, those are squares, right? Uh, interesting. Okay, so today we're going to talk about uh, GCD. All right, I'm going to pick up the, the things now. So uh, now, uh, in order to make uh, make uh, sense of this problem, I'm gonna we're gonna talk about something that uh, is gonna seem non sequitur, which is to say, like you know, whoa, we made a sharp turn and suddenly we're talking about something else. Okay, but uh, I think it's uh, necessary to motivate the topic. In fact, uh, we've talked about it a little bit before. So. Uh, uh, as a reminder, I could say let uh, let x be a subset of the reals. Let x be a, sub, a subset of the reals. Uh, then uh, the definition uh, define the maximum uh, of set x uh, as uh, an x which is a little x, which is in set x, such that, uh, such that, uh, I don't want to say max. Uh, max is fine. Uh, such that x is greater than or equal to uh, y for all y in x. So the maximum uh, on set x is uh, an element in set x, such that uh, that element is greater than or equal to all other elements in set x. Okay, and uh, similarly, uh, min of set x uh, as uh, y, or x of set x, uh, such that uh, what? Right, exactly that, uh, that quantification there, except uh, the inequality is going the other way. Uh, so x less or equal y for all y uh, and x. And uh, good. So notably, the, the maximum and minimum uh, of a set is an element, uh, must, must be an element which is in the set in question. And uh, in case you're not entirely familiar and comfortable with uh, these things, uh, I'll just remind you that, uh, that uh, the symbol this means uh, for all. That's its uh, meaning. And uh, 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 there exists is this one. So like uh, if you've, calculus is not a prerequisite for this course, but the majority of you and, and perhaps even all of you have taken calculus. Uh, you've seen these before, uh, maybe. Uh, in the definition of limit, you know, just to give you an example of its use, is that, uh, is that uh, the statement limit as x goes to c of f of x is equal to L. So that's a statement that you make in a first calculus course. Uh, that's a nice statement. Uh, that means <coughs> uh, the following statement. It means uh, for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists delta greater than zero, such that uh, zero less than x minus c less than delta implies f of x uh, minus l less than epsilon. So we don't really need to, I'm not, we're not talking about the limit definition, like uh, what it means. I just want you to see the, the usage of uh, those two symbols in a, in a math statement. 
and uh, you know, uh, these these uh, uh, you know, math math is a culture like like anything else, right? And here uh, here's a math joke that uh, you can go to a math conference, even if it's like in somewhere you know that in, in a country they speak a language you don't speak. Uh, you, you can go there and you can tell the following joke, and uh, everyone will laugh. Uh, the joke is. <laughs> so, so the joke is, is that uh, in, in math theorems and definitions and things like that, more or less uh, every time you end up seeing that symbol, uh, you're also going to end up seeing that symbol. Like they, they, come in, they come in pairs. So the joke is that uh, for, uh, for every one of these, there is uh, one of those. <laughs> right? Good. <clears throat> so, so we've got uh, the definition of max and min. Uh, now, I can ask some questions about it. Again, remember, we're talking about GCD, I promise. Just not yet. Uh, so, uh, I could ask, uh, for example, uh, what is the um, minimum of the set uh, 23 uh, to 70, like that? What do you think? 23. It's 23. In the end, uh, the reason is just that, uh, well, you can draw the number line right there and then say, well, we're talking about the set that uh, looks like this. So I, you know, colored, uh, I colored the, the set red there. And then the question more or less visually is that, uh, is there a red point that's less or equal to all of the red points. Yeah, 23, right? Okay. Uh, what about, what about, uh, what's the minimum of the reals? Look at it. There isn't one, right? There isn't one. So this does not exist. In the end, the reason is, is that, uh, well, you just draw the number line. And, you know, uh, you just, uh, you, you, you could say, well, uh, I don't know, is there a minimum? And then you could just say, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to find a number that's like uh, really, really uh, negative. It's just, you know, like way over there. So maybe it's like way, way like right there. And then, you know, are there any numbers left of that one to the left of it? Yeah. So uh, as a result, that one that I just pointed at couldn't be the minimum. There is no number that you can point at on the line where you have reached the end, right? <laughs> it goes on forever. So so there isn't one. How about, uh, how about... Uh, what's the minimum of the empty set? Uh, this doesn't exist either. Why doesn't this exist? Right, because uh, have a look at the definition. So we've got to look carefully at the definition. So uh, the minimum is a, uh, of set X is some, some element in set X. So it has to be in X, right? So, uh, so now, here, here's two different questions. Is, uh, is 10 less or equal to all elements in the empty set? Yes, it is, right? Because if you say no, then I'd say, please show me the element of the empty set that's... Uh, less than 10, and you can't produce one. That's the same kind of, that's the same kind of issue as saying that, uh, is it the case that uh, UTD is uh, undefeated in uh, national football championships? Is that the case? Yeah, we're undefeated. 
but uh, you know, the, the issue being is that uh, if you say, no, that's not true, then I'd say, please, please tell me the game that we lost. And your inability to produce that game means that uh, we are undefeated. So you've got to look at the definition carefully. The definition of the minimum uh, requires uh, the existence of an element. Right? So the fact that, that there are no elements in the empty set, in this case, the definition is saying that uh, the minimum doesn't exist. OK. So this does not exist. All right. Fine. What about, uh, what about this one? The minimum of, uh, say, 23 to infinity? That one? What about this one? Does it have a minimum? It's 23. Okay. Again, it's the it's the almost the same picture here, except I just you know uh, color all all the way. Don't don't stop at 70. All right. Here's the one that's uh, at uh, you know possibly disturbing for the first time. So uh, unless you're already comfortable with these things, which is possible. So what about uh, say like uh, this set? So that's a parentheses on 23 and a bracket on 70. What about this one? Does it have a minimum? It does not exist. Now, uh, let, let's be clear about uh, the non-existence of the minimum for this set. Uh, so, so I'm going to draw the set. And uh, it's going to look, uh, in fact, quite similar to that one. With 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 one uh, one difference. What is that? Open circle at twenty three, right? So why why can we not say that twenty three is the minimum? It's not in the set, right? Uh, uh, asking the question in terms of the picture, uh, you know, we want to find what, what, uh, is there a red point that is uh, less or equal to all other red points? So why can't we choose 23? It's not red, right? Okay. Uh, so 23 couldn't be the min. It couldn't be it because uh, 23 is not in the set. Uh, then you might say, well, you know, okay, fine, I accept that 23 is not in the set. But, uh, I mean, I'll just choose some point that's, like, really close to 23. Okay, so suppose we do that. Suppose that, uh, you know, we indicate some point that is, like, exceptionally close to 23. You know, like, looking at it really close. And uh, then I'll get out my uh, calculus eyeball there and just, uh, you know, like, really look at it. Look at what you're talking about, like, really close. And... Uh, you know, like with a microscope. And then uh, at that scale, you know, because I, cause I, you know, am free to choose the scale that I'm looking at, this will be 23, and uh, all of this will be colored red. Uh, but, uh, you know, the 70 is so far that way, it doesn't even fit on the page anymore. And uh, the, the arrow that, uh, you're, that, you're, that you're using there is, uh, like, pointing, like, right there. Well, are there any red points less than the one that you're talking about? Yeah, like uh, that one. So the one that you're pointing at couldn't possibly be the minimum. It couldn't be the minimum. So uh, because I, I have just, I've just demonstrated one that's even, even smaller. So uh, there isn't a minimum. Nevertheless, uh, for sets like this, we want to be able to say, you know, this, this set right there uh, and uh, we want to be able to say something like minimum, um, but, and, and we want the answer to be 23. But whatever we're talking about, it, it, it's not the minimum. So uh, here's a, a different matter. So we will uh, define <coughs> uh, so this, this is a definition. Definition. So I can say let uh, let 
x be a uh, subset of the reals. And uh, the following. So uh, we, will, uh, we will say define, no, not define. Definition, let blah, blah. So uh, I need uh, a is a real number. If a is less or equal to little x for all x, little x in uh, big X. So if that's the case, then uh, a is uh, called a lower bound of x. OK. Uh, <clears throat> that's the, the first bit of the definition. Uh, the set of all lower bounds of set X uh, is denoted LB of X. Okay. So the set of all uh, lower bounds. All right. So uh, again, with an example, uh, I could say, you know, consider the set. Uh, by the way, I'll just uh, let it pass without without uh, stating what an upper bound is, right? So upper bound is this, the you know, copy, paste, replace upper with lower, and replace uh, less or equal with greater or equal, and LB with UB. So uh, consider the set 23 to 70 like that. Uh, I'll draw it. And then, uh, all right. So there's the there's the thing, and uh, here I'm going to indicate a point. You know, so maybe this, maybe that uh, right there is like uh, five. So is five a lower bound of that set? Yeah, it's a lower bound. It's uh, it's less or equal. So that point I'm indicating is less or equal than all the red points. Okay. Uh, what about six? Yeah. Uh, what about what about uh, this one? Is is that a lower bound? No, right? It has to be less or equal to all red points. Okay, so these red points are less, so that's not a, that's not a lower bound. Uh, what about like negative five million? Is that a lower bound? Yeah. What about uh, what about uh, twenty-two? Is that a lower bound? Yeah. What about twenty-three? Is twenty-three a lower bound? It is. So uh, observe that uh, even though twenty-three. Uh, is not the minimum of that set. It can't be because it's not in the set. Uh, nevertheless, uh, 23 uh, is a lower bound for that set. OK, so uh, uh, right here on a, on, a, on a number line immediately under it, I would like for you to draw the set of all lower bounds. Okay, so uh, well, uh, I you know all of this, all of these are lower bounds, right? I can certainly, I can certainly draw in all of that, and then the question is, you know, in some sense, how far to the right can I go? To twenty-three. So like that. 
I gotta fill it in, right? 23 is in fact a lower bound. Okay, so uh, you know by this uh, by this definition and this visu visualization, uh, I think that uh, we can conclude, therefore, that uh, the set of all lower bounds for the set open 23 closed 70 is uh, negative infinity to uh, 23, including 23. What about, uh, so if I say that that's a uh, one there, what if I say uh, two? What about uh, without drawing now, what about uh, the, the set of all lower bounds for this one? What's the answer now? The same, right? So those two sets, even though they're different, uh, they have the same lower bound, the same set of lower bounds. Uh, because, you know, even if, even if I uh, filled that in, right, uh, even if I colored it red, would 23 still be a lower bound? Yeah, okay. So then uh, now, uh, I've got a question for you. Uh, what is, uh, uh, concerning that set, it has no minimum, right? It has no minimum, but somehow we want to be able to, to take that set. We want to be able to take that set and pick out uh, 23. We can't, we can't uh, pick it out with minimum because it's not in there. Uh, but uh, how, can we, how can we pick it out? All right, we can say uh, observe. What is the, uh, what is the uh, maximum of the set? <coughs> of lower bounds for the set 23 to 70. Does, does that have a maximum? Yeah. So is there a minimal red point? No, there's not a minimal red point. But is there a maximal green point? Ah, there is, isn't there? There's not a minimal red one, but there is a maximal green one. Ah. So this is, uh, you know, max of, uh, max of uh, that. Uh, which is uh, 23. Ah, so we can like pick out that 23 even though it's not in there by saying uh, that uh, instead of finding the minimum of the set in question, we can compute the maximum of the set of all lower bounds of the set of, in, in question. <laughs> uh, and this idea, Right, uh, you know, to, to, to say, I want to consider the set of all things that are little compared to the red set. So all the, the set of all little things. And then uh, concerning the set of all the little things, I want to find the biggest <laughs> of those. So this is like the biggest little thing right there. And uh, this, this, uh, this idea is so important that it actually has a name. What's the, what's the name of this? Infamum, right? That's the name of this thing. So uh, now we have a definition. So uh, define. So I'll, you know, I'll say in the first place, let, uh, let x be a subset of the reals. Then uh, the first definition is that uh, the infimum of set x is uh, the maximum of the set of all lower bounds of uh, set X. Now you have to be a little bit careful because uh, is, uh, is, um, is maximum defined in all cases? Not, not is the maximum of this defined, but rather is maximum defined for every conceivable set? It's not. Therefore, you should, you should not generally expect uh, that infimum is defined for every conceivable set. And we'll think about that in, uh, in a moment. And then uh, just like, um, just like uh, the counterpart to, uh, to minimum is maximum, there's a counterpart to infimum. And what, what is it? Supremum. Uh, so SUP of x. And uh, instead of, instead of uh, saying that uh, we want to find uh, the biggest of all the little things, what are we going to say? We want the littlest of all the big things. 
So instead of max, we'll say min. Uh, and instead of uh, up, uh, lower bounds, we'll say watch, upper bounds. And then, you know, depending on, depending on where, you know, if, if you've heard these uh, things before, you know, it might have been said instead, uh, you know, pronounced as uh, the greatest lower bound. The biggest little thing. <laughs> and uh, this one, the least upper bound, the littlest big thing. Uh, so this idea of finding the biggest little thing and the littlest big thing, this is really important uh, concept in math, and in fact, it's, it's all over the place. Uh, so I wanted to uh, have us go through this to prime you for this, uh, for, for this idea, because now we're going to do it, uh, and, and evidently it has something to do with, uh, with uh, greatest common divisor, <laughs> right? Because that's what we were talking about in the beginning. Okay. So to that end, Uh, I'm going to make uh, I'm going to make the division lattice for 288. You remember how we said you know we made that little arrow diagram with all the little dots and arrows? That's what I mean. Uh, so as it uh, as it happens, uh, the only prime factors of 288 are two and three. Uh, and I did that on purpose uh, so that the number would be relatively small. Uh, and also, I just wanted two prime factors because uh, the lattice for any given number, uh, the, more or less the dimension that's best to draw it in is however many prime factors it has. So the fact that, uh, that uh, 288 has two prime factors means I can draw it easily in dimension two. Uh, if were, there were three prime factors, I'd have to draw you know, in dimension three and then, you know, that, that's questionable, and then if, it, if four, you know, just, that's just right out of the question. Okay, so, uh, so I'll take uh, 288 and put it in the top right corner, and uh, I'll say that uh, the horizontal axis is the divide or multiply by two axis, so horizontally is, uh, moving horizontally is multiply or divide by two, and then uh, moving vertically is uh, multiply or divide by three. So what I, all that I mean to say is that uh, I'm going to make a, a grid of numbers. And if I move one position to the left, that's a division by 2. So what's 288 divided by 2? 144. And then that divided by 2? 72. That divided by 2? 36. And then 18. And then 9. And uh, observe that uh, I can't divide by 2 anymore. All right. So, uh, you know, uh, for the lattice, we draw arrows when it mean, uh, an arrow means this thing divide, uh, is a divisor of that thing. So there's an arrow going that way, that way, that way, that way, that way, right? Okay. So uh, moving down, that uh, is going to correspond to a division by 3. So what's uh, 288 divided by 3? 96. So 96. Uh, and 96 divides 288. So now from here, I'm going to go left again. So 96 divided by 2 is 48. Divide by 2 is 24. Divide by 2 is 12. Divide by 2 is 6. Divide by 2 is 3. And of course, I can't divide by 2 anymore. All right. So now I'm going to draw in uh, all, the, all the arrows that indicate uh, is a divisor of. So 3 is a divisor of 6, which is a divisor of 12, which is a divisor of 24, which is a divisor of 48, which is a divisor of 96. But uh, what else? The vertical ones, right? So that one, that one, that one, that one, and that one. All right. Making good progress here. So uh, now, uh, again, what is, what is moving down? What does that mean? Divide by 3. OK, so what's 96 divided by 3? 32. So 32. And then now uh, I'll go left. So that'd be uh, 16, 8, 4, 2. And uh, I'm not going to put the 1. So uh, this, this, this. That, that one, that one, that one, that one. All right. So
So there's uh, the division lattice. So the arrow means this thing is a divisor of that thing. And uh, you can select any two, uh, any two uh, things on the, on, the, on the thing there, on the grid there, and you can ask, is this one a divisor of that one? So for example, I could ask the question, is 4 a divisor of 36? Why? Because you can go, you can follow the arrows to 36. Is 4 a divisor of 18? No, you can't. There's no, uh, you can't uh, follow the arrows. You can go the wrong way, but uh, you can't go in the, the direction the arrows are pointing. Okay. Uh, now, um, all, all such uh, lattices, all such lattices, uh, you know, you could imagine like the whole, the division lattice for like, uh, you know, like all of the numbers all together, right? You want to put them all together, it'd be a really complicated infinite dimensional structure thingy. Uh, but uh, here's the thing, is that uh, when you do it, you'll see that the primes are going to, are going to be on the corners. Okay, you'll have a uh, little, little corners like that. And then, uh, and then uh, what, what comes before all the primes? One, right? One is always uh, least. So I'm going to put the one right there. So, you know, one is right there. Okay, and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, so uh, now all of these, you know, the, the lattice extends, you know, infinitely far, but uh, sort of ignoring all of that, if you were, if you were to uh, follow the arrows, uh, follow the arrows infinitely far, then uh, where would you get to? Zero. Because everything divides zero. Uh, which is to say, you know, uh, <laughs> how about, you know, what's, our, what's the uh, favorite natural number? 2370. Okay, good. So, <laughs> so uh, is, uh, is this equation true? Yeah? So, so 2370 uh, is one of zero's divisors. And, and for that matter, uh, so is zero. Zero is one of zero's divisors. Don't interpret that as, as saying that it's permitted for you to divide by zero. That's not what I'm saying. Rather, I'm saying that zero is a divisor of zero. Okay. Uh, fine. Fine. So now I'm going to select. Uh, I'll select uh, two numbers. I'm going to select uh, 36. Thirty-six, and uh, what I'm going to do is uh, concerning that thirty-six is I, I'm going to uh, I'm going to um, color all the points that are that are less than thirty-six. Uh, but uh, understand what I mean is division less than thirty-six, right? Meaning that uh, if I follow the arrows but only going backwards, those are the ones that I'm talking about. So notice that from thirty-six I can uh, uh, going backwards I can I can make it to eighteen. So I'm going to color eighteen. Uh, red. So I'm just going to put a dot there to say that I visited it. So do you, can you see all the ones that uh, you'd visit? So like you'd visit, uh, you could visit uh, 18, you could visit uh, 12, and 4, and 6, and 9, and 3, and 2, and 1. So all of those, uh, all those, all those uh, numbers that uh, I just colored red, what are those with regard to 36? Those are the divisors of 26, uh, 36, I mean, right? Those are them. There are no others. Uh, similarly, similarly, suppose that uh, I say, well, let's, uh, let's select uh, a different number, 48. Okay, and uh, now I want to find all the numbers that are uh, less than 48. But understand, when I say, say less than, I don't mean linearly less than. Rather, I mean the division order less than. Okay, so uh, can you see that, uh, uh, well, you just follow the arrows backwards, right? So this one gets uh, colored uh, green, 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 and green. Uh, should, I, should, I color, uh, should I color 18 green? No. Right, because uh, I can't get to I can't get to 18, uh, always going the wrong way. So uh, now, do you observe that uh, that, that uh, some of the numbers are, are colored both colors? Some of them are red and green. Now uh, imagine that uh, we we take the the entire division lattice, like the whole shebang. You select any two numbers, and uh, you you color. You color the divisors of the one number red, and you color the divisors of the other number green. Will it always be the case that at least one number is colored both colors? 
Yes. Which number will certainly be colored both colors? One. One, right? One has to be colored both colors. Either because uh, you're imagining the, this lattice being constructed, or isn't it the case that one divides all, number, <laughs> divides all naturals? Yeah. So now I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut. Uh, I'm going to cut that uh, the the doubly colored numbers out. So uh, uh, the the set that has uh, both colors uh, looks like this. It looks like uh, three, six, twelve, uh, two, four, one. Now, <laughs> uh, what I want you to observe is that uh, because, because we started at 36 and then found all the smaller things, what I'm saying is that like red, red represents uh, all the little things with regard to 36. And uh, green represents all of the little things with regard to 48. And uh, the things that are colored both colors uh, are all the things that are little with respect to uh, both of them, right? So these are the these are the numbers that are that are small compared to both. Of the of all the numbers that are that are small compared to both, what's the biggest one? Twelve. Twelve, Twelve is the biggest small number. Can you can you see it? <laughs> Twelve is the biggest small number. So that number right there is uh, is the greatest. slash biggest of all uh, of all naturals which are small compared to both uh, 36 and 48. So I want you, I want you to see this uh, structure. In, infimum infimum is the is uh, the biggest small number, the greatest lower bound. And uh, this thing that we're pointing at is uh, also the biggest small number. But uh, the the distinction is that uh, instead of the linear order, the order that they appear in on the line, this uh, rather is the division order. Okay. So uh, so notice that uh, I've I've switched out what what big and small means. But nevertheless, this is the biggest small number uh, for that set. So what's the name of this uh, biggest small number for those two? Well, there's a name for it, and you know it. That's the greatest common divisor. Ah, curious. So just like uh, we're not going to have time to talk about it today, uh, but we'll talk about it next time, just like there's, like there's going to be you know, a, a biggest small number, there's also going to be a smallest big number. We don't have time to talk about it today, but uh, you know we could uh, we could we could uh, go the other direction, right? Instead of going backwards, we could go forwards and say, let's paint uh, from 36. Let's paint all the things red that we can reach, and from 48, let's paint all the things green that we can reach. Then you get a you know you get a bunch of bunch of bunch of numbers. Some of them are going to be colored uh, two colors, uh, both colors. Uh, and then of that, of, of all the things colored two colors, those are all the big numbers. Uh, there's going to be a smallest one. So try and think about what that means. Uh, so here we have it. Uh, we will define. Uh, we will define uh, the greatest common divisor, GCD of A and B. GCD of A and B. Uh, is the uh, maximum of the set of all lower bounds <laughs> of the set containing just two numbers, A and B. But uh, to, make sure that it's, uh, to make sure that it's clear what, uh, what I mean, of course, uh, this maximum and this lower bound aren't talking about uh, the linear order. Rather, we're talking about the division order. So I'll put that little uh, little thing there to remind you that uh, we're talking about the division order. <laughs> okay.
fine. So uh, uh, a few, a few, uh, a few questions, uh, c considerations about this. So is it the case, uh, or is it not the case, that uh, GCD of A and B is uh, the GCD of B and A? So, so it's a question. Is that true, or, or is it not? OK, it's true. Why is it true? From the definition only. <laughs> and and not uh, not uh, I remember this from Miss Harris's class. <laughs> so why why does the definition say that that's true? What what is that? What well, and why is that? No, it's even it's even uh, simpler or lower than that. Imagine uh, so like this thing right here, like I literally just just wrote it right there, right? So if I wanted to write the definition of what that is, it's right there. And if I wanted to edit this so that it's that one, then what edit would have to be made? Instead of writing the set containing A and B, it would be what? The set containing B and A. And then now the question just becomes: Are those the same set? Yeah, they are the same set, right? So this is uh, true uh, because, in the end, that uh, the set AB is the same as the set uh, containing uh, B and A because the order of elements in sets is not relevant. It's just that simple. OK. Uh, fine. Um, let's consider. So uh, is it the case, <coughs> is it the case that uh, GCD, <coughs> GCD of A and B is defined? For uh, for all uh, A B. Is that the case? Well, <coughs> in the end, uh, in the end, part part of what we're going to need. Uh, part of what we're going to need is that uh, because we want a maximum, right? Maximums don't always have to exist. You know, that's why we had to talk about uh, infimum and supremum. Uh, but uh, even before that, let's consider, uh, you know, the set of all lower bounds. If the set of all lower bounds is, is empty, then we'd be in a real big problem. So I is it possible that the set of all lower bounds uh, could ever be empty? No, because one is always in the set of all lower bounds. Why? Why is one always in the set of all lower bounds? Yeah, because it divides all primes. And, it, and therefore, all numbers, right? So one is definitely in there. So it's not possible, it's not conceivable that, uh, that uh, the set of all lower bounds could be empty. So it's, it's surely non-empty. Okay, then, uh, <coughs> then uh, what about... Uh, what about should it should there be should there be a maximum? Should there be one? So I'll I'll leave that open. I'll leave that open. So you uh, think about that. There is one, uh, but uh, let's let let's I, I leave it to you to try and think about why why there should be a max. Okay, define it like this. Okay, here's a here's a I'll flip the, to the next page. Because now we're starting to get to places where, uh, where uh, things get disturbing, possibly. So if you're going to end up choking on these definitions, here's, here's the first place. So like maybe, you know, like 3 or 4 or 5% of you might say, Ugh, I'm not sure about that. So how about uh, the GCD of, uh, of uh, A and 0? Well, uh, let's think about this for a moment. What is, uh, what is, what is the, the greatest divisor of A? A, right? You can't get any, you can't get any bigger than that. Uh, 
And then what is the set of all divisors of zero? All the naturals, right? All of them. Everything divides zero. So if, uh, if, the la if the division lattice for this one, if its greatest element is A, and uh, the division lattice for this one is everything, then uh, what's the greatest thing that they have in common? A. A. It's A. Uh, OK, <laughs> that's disturbing. But uh, you, know, you, can, uh, you can just uh, you know, do 12 here, right? So like 12, and then uh, you know, 6, uh, 3, 4, uh, 2, like this, you know, just, just this little thing here. So that's the, that's the division lattice for 12, right? So that would mean that uh, if, I wanted, if I wanted to color all the things that uh, divide 12, that would, be, that would be all this stuff. And then uh, if I started at 0 and then started going backwards and colored all the stuff that's uh, divisible by 0, uh, th sorry, that, uh, that divides 0, I mean to say, uh, then which ones uh, do I need to color? All of them, right? Everything divides zero. And then the question becomes, uh, well, of all the things that have both colors, which one is greatest? 12 is. OK. Uh, fine. Uh, notice that that also means that uh, the GCD of 0 and A is uh, A. OK. And uh, if you're not gonna, if 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 you didn't choke on that one, then uh, then uh, this is this is the one that uh, that uh, <laughs> that uh, that hurts. Uh, what about this one? Remember how GCD is defined, right? Uh, GCD is the biggest little thing, <laughs> the biggest little thing. So you've got to ask. Uh, well, suppose that uh, suppose that we made a division lattice for, uh, you know, just just make the whole division lattice. Just imagine that it exists, and then start at zero and color color uh, zero and all of its predecessors red. And then after you've uh, done that, uh, start at zero and color zero and all of its predecessors uh, green. So which which uh, which uh, numbers have both colors? All of them. Right, because zero is the biggest one. You know, so, and you're going backwards from zero. So, so all of them are colored both colors. And uh, of the of of all of them, which one is the biggest? Zero. zero. So the GCD of zero and zero is zero. Now I have a uh, you know a, a brief warning uh, that uh, you might not have realized yet, but uh, anyone at all can edit Wikipedia. Even uh, people who have uh, no qualifications or knowledge whatsoever. Okay, <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if you realize that. Like, you, you could go edit it. <laughs> and uh, uh, at any rate, uh, the, the definition of, of GCD on, on Wikipedia uh, sa says that uh, GCD of zero and zero doesn't make sense or something like that. I, I don't know what to say other than the person who wrote that just doesn't know what they're talking about. Okay. Really, what the problem is, I can just almost surely, I can't predict the future or read minds, but uh, the, pro the problem that uh, that that author has is that uh, they don't understand that uh, the greatest, the word greatest in greatest common divisor is not talking about the linear order. What's it talking about? The division order. That's the problem. So the fact that, uh, the, fact that uh, you know, the name of this thing has greatest in it and... Uh, you know, the, the answer is, uh, is, you know, zero. You know, that is just, I, I suspect, just, uh, you know, tweaking that person's mind. Okay, but at any rate, there we have it. Okay, but uh, still, we don't yet have an effective way to compute GCD, right? We don't know how to compute yet, besides with this lattice thingy. Uh, what we want, in the end, is we want to have a way to, to uh, well, just like we always have, write a function that does this, right? So, in the same kind of way, uh, that, uh, that we've solved all previous problems. We want to say that, uh, okay, I know how to take like one little bite out of the problem, uh, so I can like, like solve one little bit of it, 
And then uh, now what remains is, a, is still a, a similar problem, but it's smaller. Right? Same kind of idea. And the same kind of way that we could say, well, how do you, uh, how do, you uh, do 8 multiplied by x? Well, you take, uh, you take an x, and uh, then you add 7x to it. Right? Uh, so what you're doing is you're trading like, a, I know what an x is. And I traded 8x for 7x, which is a slightly smaller problem. OK, so we want to do the same thing. It's sort of, you know, the, the, uh, the, uh, the idea is like a, you know, the, the, the saying, how do, you eat a, how do you eat a whale? One bite at a time, right? <laughs> you take one bite, and now the problem is, is smaller. OK, so here we go. Uh, suppose. Suppose that uh, D is the GCD of A and B. Suppose that's the case. I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that we know that, that how, how we did that. Just suppose, suppose that it's true. Uh, then uh, then uh, there exists little m and uh, n uh, naturals uh, such that, uh, well, since, uh, since uh, D is the greatest common divisor of A and B, it means that it, it divides A and B. It divides A, and it also divides B. So such that uh, A is uh, MD, and B is ND. That's what it means to be a, you know, that's what it means. It's not just any divisor, it's the greatest one, but in particular, it's a divisor. Okay, now, either uh, either A is less or equal B, or A is greater or equal B. And that's the linear order. That's not the division order. One of those things has to be true. Okay? Uh, if, the, if A and B are the same, still, one of them has to be true. Okay. So then, uh, without loss of generality, uh, I'll assume that A is less or equal to B. And if that's not the case, then you just just swap them, and then and then it is true. Okay. So uh, as a result of that, I can say that uh, therefore, b minus a is uh, greater than or equal to zero, and uh, b minus a is a natural number. So all that I mean is you just take two naturals, okay, like 24 and 25. Okay. You take two naturals, 24 and 25. Either 24 minus 25 is natural or 25 minus 24 is natural. One of them is. Uh, but notice that uh, b minus a, uh, b minus a, well, that's equal to uh, n d minus m d. But uh, now notice that, uh, that uh, d is uh, common to both of them. d is common to both of them, so I could say that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, this is n minus m multiplied by d. And uh, now notice what I can conclude. I can say, uh, therefore, therefore, in fact, uh, d is a divisor of b minus a. Right? d is a divisor of b minus a. And uh, there, there, couldn't, there couldn't be any biggest there couldn't be a divisor bigger than D for B minus A. Why not? What's the biggest that uh, B minus A could possibly be? B, right? It couldn't be any bigger. So, uh, you know, and furthermore, uh, and uh, there is no greater, either linearly order or division order. And no greater than D uh, is a divisor. Of uh, B minus A. And uh, as a result, we can say that uh, the GCD of AB. And this is now under working under the assumption that uh, A is less or equal B. GCD of uh, AB is uh, GCD of A and uh, B minus A.
now. So what, what this is saying is that uh, if you wanted to calculate that GCD, you could uh, instead calculate that GCD. And uh, you know, that, that, that's good enough because what that is is that's one byte. And how do, you, how do you eat a whale? One byte at a time. So finally, we can write down uh, a working definition for GCD of AB. So because of this last thing that we said, because we need it to be the case that, uh, that uh, A is less or equal B, uh, that means that uh, you know, if, someone, if someone calls our GCD function with, uh, with the numbers in the wrong order, so you know, we want this one to be the little one, and we want that to be the big one, but GCD is symmetric, so it should work either way. Uh, we want to say that, uh, well, we want to we want to swap them and put them into the correct order, the order that we want. And uh, under what circumstance do we need to do that? Yeah, if it turns out that A is bigger than B. So like uh, you know that's uh, oh someone asked us to do it that way, but you know rah, switch it. Okay. So then uh, the next one we know that uh, we can stop. We know that we can stop when uh, when the little one is zero. Oops. No. So when the little one is zero, then uh, what's the answer? B, right? The answer is the big one. And then uh, finally, finally, uh, we just have uh, one more bit of information, and that is that, uh, well, if we're not going to put them in the right order and we're not going to stop, that means that we need to take a bite. So what goes right here? GCD of A and B minus A. So this is a, uh, this definition will work because what's going to happen is that uh, slowly but surely these arguments are marching down uh, toward uh, one, uh, one of them becoming zero. Now, this is, this is an awful way to calculate GCD and we're going to talk about much better ways, but this is, this is a way uh, to do it. And uh, again, I want to remind you to, to think about it. GCD is the biggest, uh, the biggest of all the little numbers. And I want you to think about what, what is going to be the littlest of all the big numbers. All right. Have a nice Thursday.